Hello family, I hope anyone who likes my videos to support me by subscribing to my channel. Please give me the energy to make more effort into videos. Thank you for your support family and let's start our movie recap. Our movie starts with a guy seen lying down inside a vault. When he wakes up, a dead rat is lying next to him. He looks at the time and then tries to unlock the vault door, but he is unsuccessful. He yells that this isn't a joke and that he needs to relieve himself, but he receives no response. He then complains that if he doesn't go, he will lose his job. The locker door seemed to be about to open as he tried to acquire a signal on his mobile phone, but nothing happened. He yells, referencing Fletcher and declaring that he has no time for his jokes. After some time, he urinates in the room's corner in an effort to blend in with the situation. Then he threatens to take a poo right there in the if the door isn't unlocked. After pacing for a bit, he starts hammering on the vault door, shouting at the top of his lungs and yelling profanities. He then goes crazy and tries to break down the locker door, which is within the vault. After a while, he comes down. He claims to be really thirsty and in need of some water. Then the scene is cut. Beginning on day two, maggots can be seen emerging from the dead rats when the guy is disturbed by flies as he sits down. He mentions three things, including a dead rat and a vault locker. A little while after checking his phone and watching for a signal and the time, he pees inside his shoe and declares that he will fire the guy who is torturing him. He then drinks the urine. He declares the urine to be pleasant and asks, are you happy? While gazing at the vault door as though someone is there. Now, current unstable, he leaps up and curses while attempting to smash the vault lamp. After some time, he carefully examines the lamp and disassembles it within the light's broken glasses. He discovers a key and deduces that this is a test. He approaches the locker and uses the key to open it. When he opened the locker, he discovered. In it, he discovers some equipment. He ultimately decides that he can use the tools to open the vault, so he starts to work. After some time, he assembles a blowtorch with the help of some other tools and the gas cylinder he discovered. With the flames from the torch, he attempts to activate the fire alarm, but it doesn't work. Then, after trying to burn open the vault door with increasing rage, he advances to it. He loses control and destroys the sprinkler that is situated over the vault. He stays up for a while, and after a time he chooses to calm down and shortly after that he considers how to acquire water. He settles down and reassures himself that he isn't being imprisoned in the vault and that this isn't a dream. He draws the conclusion that whatever is causing him pain wants him dead. He makes the decision to rise up, exit the vault, and exact revenge on the offender. He uses a chisel and a hammer to try to cut a hole in the wall of the vault, but even though he yells and gets dust in his eyes, he keeps trying. After some while, he eventually stops from exhaustion. He moves forward once more as he continues. Each time, he pauses and gasps for oxygen a few seconds later. He then attempts to obtain oxygen from the gas cylinder. After waking up, he passes asleep and realizes that he must eat in order to survive. He approaches the decomposing rat and eats the maggots emanating from it. Later, he chooses to consume the flies. He then redrinks it after peeing on his shoes. He returns to excavating the hole after a time. He excavates to a certain point and finds iron bars in the wall. In the following scene, he removes the iron bars with the blowtorch. Although he has heard snoring, he is awakened by flies. After a time, he resumed excavating. Then, in an effort to restrain himself, he tries to widen the hole. He finally makes it through to the other side and discovers that it connects to another vaulted chamber. He attempts to open the door but is unable to do so. He yells at the top of his lungs out of frustration. Then, as he circles the second vault chamber, he comes across a coffin that is resting in the corner. He unlocks the coffin after retrieving the chisel from the first vault chamber. He opens the casket and discovers a lady. She exits and enters the other vault chamber via the gap. The man is scared and perplexed when she speaks a few words in another language that he cannot comprehend. The woman makes her way around the space before sitting down in a nook. He has been observed dozing asleep in the casket as of day three. He is awakened by the woman, who also points the chisel out to him. They must discover a way out. He instructs her to choose the side of the wall she believes leads outside. He instructs the woman to hold the chisel against the wall as he attempts to strike it with the hammer after she makes her choice. She pulls her hand away out of fear. He instructs her to strike the chisel with the hammer when they switch places. She strikes the chisel with the hammer, but she was unable to apply sufficient pressure for it to have a substantial effect on the wall. After some time, he remembers how he entered the vault, attempting to return to his last memory of him which was in a bar. She responds in a language when he asks her a question. He does not comprehend. 
She attempts to dig the hole once more, but she hurts him this time. He stops her as she attempts to pee on the floor in the other vault room. She is instructed to relieve herself in his shoes so he may drink it. She does, and he gives her gratitude. They each then take a sip from the shoe. She then stops him as he attempts to eat the dead rat. After some time, she muttered some phrases that were later translated to reveal her African origin. Just then, he offers to sing for her a song he knows that is from Africa. He attempts to break through the wall while doing this. They both smile as she joins him in singing. Who's digging? He yells and strikes his hands. With her scarf, the woman assists him in bandaging his injured hand. The vault door slides as he instructs her to strike it with the hammer, and they both race to grab it. He then clutches the chisel in his other hand. They were unable to open the door, and he subsequently realizes that the guy who was causing them pain was only making fun of them. The vault door moves once more as they start excavating again. He assures her that he has it all figured out and cautions her from watching the door move. To get to the door, they both go backward. The two also find another chamber with a coffin-sized hole on the floor when the door to it opens. Dig is started once the pair chooses a side in the hole. Time goes by. He tires and tumbles. He continues by saying that he must eat and drink to survive. He realizes that whoever is in control wants him to devour the woman, but he makes the decision that he will not do it under any circumstances. She extricates him from the hole and sits next to him. He begs her to go away so he may get some rest. She then makes her way to the door and prays in her own tongue to God. After some minutes, she sobs and squirts the man with tears. After that, he gains some strength. She makes love to him after removing the man's clothing. The two are enthralled by the scene. Moments later, with music playing in the background, he awakens up, leaving her on the floor. He takes his clothing out of the casket and proceeds to the other vault chamber. When the vault door finally opens and he can no longer cover her with it, he awakens her. He issues a warning to her. To get to the vault entrance, the pair walks backward. They emerge into a garden that resembles a paradise when it opens. I wasn't expecting that he exclaims, as the pair smile at one another and enter the garden while holding hands. This is how our movie ends. Leave us a comment on how you found this movie recap. See you in the following movie recap.